I'm Le Hu in Beijing. We start in Thailand where the opposition Democrat Party says it has gained the support of five parties in the former ruling coalition and will try to form a new government. The party is supported by the People's Alliance for Democracy, which had, uh, headed mass demonstrations against the former ruling coalition led by the People Power Party. Zhang Rui has more. The Democratic Party announced on Saturday that it has the backing of 260 lawmakers in the parliament's 400-seat lower house, giving it a majority and allowing it to form a government. Everyone here is fully convinced about the political situation of the country. Therefore, we have decided together to form a coalition government to solve the crisis of the country. But given the chaos in recent months and deep political and social rifts, the apparent Democrat triumph will not be assured until Parliament meets within the next 30 days to vote on whether to endorse party leader Apisit Wichachiwa as the new Prime Minister. Representatives of the newly joined party say they have switched sides because it's the best way out of the current crisis. <laughs> Our decision is hurting us as much as our supporters, but as a Thai citizen, we need to consider the benefit of the country rather than the dignity of a political party. The Democrats cobbled together their coalition against a sobered backdrop. 81-year-old King Pumimpo Aduyadet, regarded as a cornerstone of stability, is ill. If the new coalition were to select a prime minister close to ousted prime minister Thaksin Shinawatra, analysts believe it could once again trigger mass protests from the People's Alliance for Democracy. But for now, it appears the opposition has gained the upper hand. Don't worry, CCTV. The DPRK says it will not meet with Japan at the upcoming six-party talks aimed at denuclearizing the Korean Peninsula. The DPRK says that Japan has neither justification nor qualification to participate in the talks. Wu Peng has more. Korean Central Television News quoted the DPRK Foreign Ministry as saying that the main task of the new round of six-party talks is to ensure the speed of economic compensation to the DPRK. It says the disablement for aid agreement reached by the six parties could move on without Japan. The DPRK was responding to Japan's refusal to provide any economic aid until some progress is made on the abduction issue. Japan insists the DPRK is hiding Japanese citizens who were kidnapped 30 years ago. But the U.S. says it hopes the DPRK could take the Japanese concerns into consideration. We did have a discussion about uh, the need for the DPRK to do more to meet Japanese uh, concerns, especially on the abduction matter. Hill said he expects Monday's talks to be difficult. He indicated meetings would focus on working out a detailed plan to verify the DPRK's nuclear programs. We need a situation where when we begin the verification, there are no surprises. Hill said he will speak with his South Korean counterpart, Kim Suk, about providing field aid to the DPRK. Wu Peng, CCTV. Despite repeated protests from China, French President Nicolas Sarkozy has gone on meeting the Dalai Lama. A commentary by the Xinhua News Agency describes the French President's meeting on Saturday as unwise and short-sighted, saying it not only hurt the feelings of the Chinese people but also undermined efforts to deepen Sino-French relations. The commentary notes that the Tibet issue involves China's sovereignty and territorial integrity. It points out that the Dalai Lama has long been engaged in activities aimed at split China. It says the Chinese government and people firmly oppose such separatist activities, no matter where they are conducted and under what disguise. And they also stand firmly against any foreign leader's contact with the Dalai Lama. The Chinese and Indian armies are holding a week-long joint anti-terrorism training in India. After the opening ceremony in Balgom in the state of Karnataka, soldiers displayed their weapons. Chinese soldiers performed Tai Chi and showcased their shooting skills, while their Indian counterparts presented the country's traditional martial arts. 
During the coming days, soldiers will train for anti-terror operations and discuss ways of fighting terrorism. The exercise aimed to promote understanding and trust between the two military forces. India has remained jittery since the Mumbai attacks, and now police in Anandpur, part of western Maharashtra state, say they have found explosives in the hospital. Doctors at Crescent Hospital say a caller speaking in Hindi and calling from a public phone booth claimed that a bomb had been placed near the hospital entrance and threatened of dire consequences within 10 minutes. Patients were evacuated and a police bomb squad and a sniffer dog were called in. Police say they have recovered the explosives and are now investigating the incident. In a bid to dispel misunderstanding that a higher consumption tax will mean higher pump prices, tax officials in China have offered a further explanations on the proposed tax reform of fuel tax and pricing. The National Development and Reform Commission, the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Transport and the State Administration of Taxation held a joint press conference on Saturday. Chris Haozeng has more. This round of fuel tax reform consists of two parts. First, gradually abolishing six categories of fees, including road maintenance tax and highway toll charge. Second, raising consumption taxes for gasoline and diesel to 1 and 0.8 yuan respectively. The government says the tax is already reflected in the pump prices. Therefore, there won't be any increase to the retail prices. It says the proposed tax is in fact lower than what's been levied in the European Union and many other countries and regions. The draft plan says China's domestic crude oil prices should be set directly in line with world prices. The government says the reform is aimed at promoting China's oil sector as well as energy saving and also to ensure domestic fuel supply and stable economic growth. If you drive less, you will pay less tax. If you drive more, you will pay more. This is the main purpose of our reform. It encourages people to save gasoline, and this will reduce emissions. It's not a simple transportation policy. It's an important policy for energy resources and consumption. The plan also calls for a limit on pump prices. The government says it will continue to regulate retail prices so as to prevent large price hikes caused by fluctuations in international oil prices. Gu Xiaozeng, CCTV. China's first privately owned airline, OK Air, has a suspended passenger service 10 days ahead of schedule. The move comes as a result of financial and management problems. The airline says the main reason for the suspension is that several OK Air flights were delayed due to filling problems, and it could not ensure the safety of the remaining flights. The airline says more than 2,000 passengers were stranded at airports across the country, and arrangements are being made for these passengers to transfer to other airlines. Meanwhile, OK Air's cargo service is still up and running. Oil markets should brace for a decision on output cuts when the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries meets on December 17th in Algeria. OPEC President Chakib Khalil made the statement in an interview with the Associated Press. Khalil said a consensus has formed among OPEC members for a significant reduction of uh, production levels, suggesting that the reductions could be deeper than expected. However, Khalil did not discuss how deep the cuts would be, saying only that they could be severe. He warned that oil prices that remain too low would start hurting oil producers and add up to the global economic recession. The OPEC chief said a fair price for oil would be at least 70 US dollars a barrel. The cartel has already slashed supplies by 2 million barrels per day to help prop up prices.